guys? <laughs> Texting while streaming. It's really dangerous. How's it going, Mama? What's up, Nabadavs? How's everyone doing today? Thank you. No, please don't pee on my mods. That's not nice. That's pretty gross. No one wants that. <laughs> How are you, Mama? Do anything cool this weekend? Hey, how's it going, Steam? Good to see you. What have you guys been up to? Anyone do anything cool this weekend? realized that like all my dishes were still like in my in my dishwasher aka my drying rack Visible, it might be a little small, but. Ay, ay, ay. Why? Okay. <laughs> Had a party and recovering from it. Ah, uh, drink lots of water. Fun. Were you celebrating anything in particular or uh, just for the heck of it? It was actually a chill weekend. Me too. What did we do this weekend? Did we do anything? I already forgot. I worked. I had to work yesterday and today. I'm super stoked, guys. I got a pasta roller. Hey, sushi day! Welcome, welcome! Oh, you guys, I'm not even cooking yet. Ah, it's a sushi raid! Oh, man. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hi guys, how's everyone doing today? Welcome. If this is your first time here, I am Zobo Cat. I am about to make some pasta tonight because I'm so excited. I got, oh, thank you, Stinky. Yeah, I, um, I stopped by Sushi Day today and, oh, uh, thank you. Oh my gosh, Mala, thanks for the sub. Let's spin the wheel. Okay, oh wait. Well, welcome guys, if this is, huh? Hack Ninja gave Mala the sub. Oh, Hack Ninja, sorry. Well, thank you to Mama for being so supportive, but also thank you to Hack Ninja for the gift sub. Sushi hits us if we don't raid. Oh my God, how mean. Hey, 
see, where's my wheel? <laughs> there we go. I know I found it at um, my local thrift store and I was there and I was just browsing like I do all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Miss Tapcat. Thank you for the follows, guys. <gasps> we have a very special guest for you today. Deck bags. We have a very special guest, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dexter. Da -da 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 -da. Thanks, everybody. Um, if this is your first time here, guys, my name is Sobo Cat. Um, I am primarily a cooking streamer. Sometimes I do other stuff as well, but mostly cooking and baking. And I'm so stoked because I found this for $8 check it eight dollars at my local thrift store and i was just super stoked because i've been kind of wanting one for a while and it just i don't know it's like people here when i want stuff and they donate it at the right time which is super cool so i have not used it at all it seems to be a little bit older but it also looks to be in really good condition yeah. <laughs> oh, machine. Hey, Hack Ninja, thanks for the follow. Oh, gosh. It is a, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm really excited about it. So it, it appears to be in, like, near-perfect condition. If it was ever used at all, they did a really nice job of cleaning it. I know. You can see your reflection in it. <laughs> um... Yeah, Sushi Day. I, I am in LA. Well, technically I'm in the valley, but... <laughs> oh, yeah. See, Christina knows. Christina knows. Um, what's up, Vegan Chikiri? How are ya? We might be neighbors. Yeah, I know. I They either did a really great job wiping it down, or it's, like, never used. So it, there might be some flour under here. So I'm guessing it was used, like, maybe really lightly but I've never touched one of these before. <laughs> so I don't know how it's gonna go, but it'll be fun. We'll get there in a second. I haven't even started making my dough yet. Hangry Pandas, thank you for the follow. Hack Ninja, another LA streamer, you thought you were alone? Nah. We, we're here, we're out here. Yeah, older appliances last longer. Well, this one's this one's just a hand crank. It's not it's not like an electronic anything. So, I I just I made sure that all the parts worked. You know, like I plop this in here and make sure that it cranks. It does crank. You know, so that's all. <laughs> so I'm pretty nervous, but it'll be fun. What the heck? For eight dollars. For an eight dollar, like, you know, if it totally sucks, then whatever, it's eight bucks. <laughs> Christina, you're gonna make homemade pasta? Yeah, I've been wanting to do it. The, the only time I've ever attempted it was a couple months ago. I did it on stream and I tried to make ravioli and it just like didn't really go that well because I hand rolled the dough and it was, it just was not like the best. Um, yeah <laughs> it was like really thick and doughy and just overall like not super awesome so i wasn't really that stoked on it but oh, i think i'm gonna need my stand mixer actually for this hang on let me pull up my recipe real real quick here um homemade bread and pasta i've been making bread um this is the remains of a loaf that I made a couple days ago um, of, it's supposed to be sourdough. It honestly wasn't sour enough for me. Um, so I, I need to work on it a little bit. Um, yeah, let's see, here we go, fresh pasta dough. Um, for all my cooking people, cooking streamers and just cooking hobbyists and all that, if you guys don't already, I highly recommend this site called Coffee <sighs> Hey, Turkey. Stop that. And I, <laughs> I highly recommend um, the site copymethat.com. Um, 
It is really cool. Um, highly recommend because it basically you can download a plugin for your Chrome and when you're browsing a website. Yeah, I love it. I, I started doing it um, a couple months ago because I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Like I'm tired of like wanting to make something again and being like, hey, that recipe was really good. I kind of want to try making it again. And I'd look it up and then I'd be like Googling and being like, where, where was it? And trying to like read the ingredients in the reviews to see if anything like stuck in my brain. And I was like, this is ridiculous. There's gotta be some way to like organize my stuff. And this is it. So I really love it. It's free. I super recommend it. You can like put in your own recipes or you can edit it if you want to change stuff. You can pull stuff from other websites. It's very handy. Okay, so I'm gonna make my dough first because it has to rest a little bit before we start rolling it. So we're gonna start there. Um, uh. Okay. Cool. I'm going to hand mix these, so I'm going to take off my ring real quick so I don't get pasta dough all up in there. It's just like a really basic pasta dough, just like eggs, flour, eggs, flour, oil, and salt. That's it. Squidding. I don't have any squidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, DR Link? Thanks so much for the follow. Okay. Um, I have a feeling that today's stream is going to be a little bit of a dishes heavy one, but we'll, yeah, I don't know. Wish me luck. <laughs> All right. I hate when like the gooey, like snotty bits hang in the egg. It's so gross. Okay, and then we're gonna do some flour. I'm gonna knead it with my hands. Trial and error is our motto. That, yeah, mama knows. I am not a professional chef, in case you guys were wondering, in case you may have guessed. Um, I'm, I'm just an amateur home chef, and sometimes it doesn't go as planned, and that's okay. <laughs> um. Do some flour in here. You guys are wondering what's in my flour sometimes people ask me it's a bay leaf i don't know if it actually works but a family friend used to put bay leaves in their flour because supposedly it like keeps pests out um and i have had issues in the past like i did have a pantry moth problem one time like when was that like two three years ago mm -hmm. yeah and that was just a nightmare if you guys have ever had pan uh, pantry moths Oh, they're the worst. I literally had to go through every single thing in our pantry and like check it and throw it out or, you know, repackage it. Oh my God, it was a nightmare. So supposedly it keeps bugs from wanting to go in your flower, but I don't know. I know it's awful. It is so gross. And they just like, they get into stuff and you're like, how did you even get into that bag, you know? Like, I thought I sealed it, but you know what? 
it was so it was a huge pain in the butt and it took me days and days because i had to clean everything out and i had to throw out a ton of food um which was actually not that bad because some of it was expired anyway so it kind of was a good excuse to have to go through everything but still like it was a nightmare and then i bought a ton of like ceiling and plastic containers and um i bought a ton of like moth traps and it was it was war like it was on <laughs> and i won because i haven't seen one in years Well, you don't have to have a pantry to have pantry mods. They, if you have any like dark, cool space, um, and you have food in there, like, yeah, you can get them. I have no idea where they came from, you know, like it's awful, but like I said, I was able to get rid of them. So it is possible. All right. Some olive oil. I got rid of them. Um, I basically did like, so the thing with bugs, like when you're trying to get rid of bugs, you have to like go all in, <laughs> like you have to, you can't just like kind of work on it. You got to like clean everything out. So for the mods, what I did was, um, I took every food item out of my pantry, every single item, like even sealed things, even like sealed canned goods because I know this is gross and not something we want to talk about when we're cooking, but they, they like lay their eggs in like the grooves and stuff of cans. Oh, sounds good, Christina. Catch you later. And uh, you take everything out and then you scrub down your entire pantry. You clean up all of it. I used like vinegar. I know it's so gross. I used like, like a vinegar um, diluted solution and just wiped everything out, disinfected it and then went through every single food item, threw away what I had to throw away, cleaned what I had to clean, like aired it out, put traps everywhere. It was like a whole, it was a whole thing, but it worked. So yeah, <laughs> if you are ever unfortunate enough to have an infestation like that, don't despair. Oh, and I'll show you the, the brand of trap that I actually got. And I, I still have them. They're probably like not that sticky anymore but I still keep them around. This one's like pretty old. I don't know why I still have it, but um, Dr. Killigan's. Yeah, it works well. <laughs> you have small ants right now? Oh no, I don't like ants either. Ants, I had ants back when we first moved into this place and um, I think I wiped out the colony. I like, I put out poison. Also, oh my gosh, killing them softly, I know. <laughs> it's cheesy. Um, it, do you guys ever have problems with fruit flies? Cause I have, I have a good fruit fly solution too. Like, <laughs> if you guys are interested, if you have a problem with fruit flies, um, get a jar or a cup or some, you know, some like, wide mouth container and put some apple cider vinegar. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna mix this with my hands until a shaggy dough forms. Let me also preemptively get out my mixer because I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna use the dough hook after I get it kind of combined. So, and then this way, it's just here already. Um, yeah, exactly. See, DJ Concarne knows you. Oh, um... Concarne! <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's it going, Spurgeon King? Welcome back. All right, so this is my egg, flour, olive oil, and salt mixture. I'm just gonna like uh, try to combine it. Um, yeah, apple cider vinegar, a little, a couple drops of dish soap. Sometimes I add a little bit of water. Um, or a little bit of sugar, and you mix that up and you put it out in the area where you are having issues. And basically the smell of the vinegar attracts them. And then the soap uh, like lowers the surface tension of the liquid so that when they go to drink it or check it out, they like fall in and they can't get out. So it, it's quite effective. 
and I highly recommend it. I had fruit flies like a couple weeks ago. I think they came in with my bananas or something because one day they just showed up in my kitchen and I was like, what the heck is this? Like, horrible. But I did that and I got rid of them within a few days, so. Then you have a glass full of fruit flies. That's true. That's true. <laughs> The cockroach you had a cockroach trap that was pretty satisfying yep i've seen those too i lived in a place that had a cockroach problem it is all like bugs are rough it is just ongoing war what we're talking about bugs wow. he says stop talking about bugs okay yeah. well sorry like topic. whatever sorry it's not a cooking topic Gross. All right, well, fine. So, what did everyone do this weekend? <laughs> well, Steampunk, I guess it's not a food appropriate topic. <laughs> I'm literally talking about getting rid of them. Okay, like. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. I know Steampunk was learning. I was sharing knowledge on how to eradicate certain common household pests. It was, don't you see the educational tag in my stream? <laughs> It's educational. I'm really proud of the fruit fly one. I tell everyone that one because fruit flies happen. This is like a really deep bowl. Maybe I should mute it on the counter. And it says I have to use my dough hook. And it says to knead it with a dough hook for 10 minutes, which is like crazy. I'll do it. This recipe is from Bon Appetit. So, whatever. I'll try it. Okay, so we kind of got like a somewhat passable dough. It's not super smooth yet, but it looks alright. And then I'm supposed to mix it with a dough hook. It said for 10 minutes, so uh, we're gonna try it. <laughs> okay, get all that off. Dough is so sticky, it won't come off. Weesh. How's it going, Kit? How are ya? Okay, let's dough hook it up. Ah, get it? Let's hook it up. I didn't even, that was like an accident. Okay. annoying to have that sound in the background for 10 whole minutes, but yeesh. Dough hook hype zone. Choo -choo -choo -choo. Okay, after we finish getting this nice and smooth, we're gonna let it rest for 30 minutes and blah 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 and then roll it out. Okay, cool. So that's done. No, Steampunk, no one wants to hear about the bugs. Sorry. I wanted to talk about them, but I guess no one else was into it, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 
Hey, see, Smirgan King wants to talk about it. <laughs> In our garden, there are often so many ants. Your mother wages war against them several times a summer. When she has the family size ant poison pack in her hand, she looks like Rambo. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, so I am using, for the sauce, I'm gonna be using a recipe here, but I think I'm gonna change it up. So I'm gonna try to take some notes and adjust my recipe accordingly. Um, the, the recipe that I'm that I'm starting with, sorry, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. I know it's kind of annoying. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, this is a like a, a squash pasta sauce with fried sage. I'm thinking of doing something similar. Um, I'm thinking of maybe adding bacon to it as well. Um, and then instead of the vegetable broth, I'm thinking of using chicken broth. So I have some ideas. I'm going to use this as a guide and try to take notes. I don't do this that often. Usually I like to find a recipe and just stick with it, but I couldn't really find one that like really sounded like what I was looking for. So I'm going to be bold today and um, try to kind of go rogue a little bit. I don't do this that much. <laughs> Okay, the dough is still working. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Sweet. Well, if Uncle Stinky approves, then I guess we're good. So the recipe they have here um, calls for butternut or kabocha squash. Um, I am, I have these, I forget what they're called. Um, Hey, how's it going, Fantastic? I have these. Um, it says they're an acorn squash, but I, I feel like it's a different variety. Um, the ones that I get at the farmer's market, they call them something different. She has this expression in her face <laughs> when you eat before mealtime, like she's got the intention to kill. She's ready for war. <laughs> How's it going, Fantastic? Okay, so this recipe calls for them to be peeled. I don't know if these are gonna peel, and if they don't, I'm gonna have to come up with a plan B. So, let's see. Are they peelable? Yes, they are peelable. Great. That's good news. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the pasta party. Um. We got about three cups of peeled, seeded, and cubed squash. I also have some fresh sage. Um, and I'm gonna, I think the sage is gonna go nicely with the, with the squash. I'm gonna keep that. That was in the recipe and I, I like that idea. I think I'm gonna keep that. Um, let's see, I got an onion. Chop that onion. Uh, some garlic, red pepper, black pepper, broth. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward. And then I think I'm gonna fry some bacon in a separate pan, crumble that and add it in. So, or like maybe use it as a garnish or something. Okay, okay. And we get to toast the seeds, which is awesome. I love having uh, squash seeds. It's delicious. All right. You semi messed up tonight's Mexican rice, but you also want to see if they notice. What 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 did you do? Uh, what did you mess up? Oops. Oh, I just realized these grooves are going to be a little difficult to. Uh, well, I'll do my best. Let's see. <laughs> you use potatoes. What? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. 
burn the bottom a little bit. Eh. Whatever. It happens. What were you cooking? What was going with the rice? Mm, I love Mexican rice. Yeah, it makes it it makes it crispy and flavorful. Okay, this is gonna be hard to how am I gonna peel in the grooves? I can peel around the grooves just fine, but I can't get in there. It's kinda difficult. Oh my gosh, Mexican potatoes? That sounds amazing. Like the exact same spices that you would put into the rice, but like with fried potatoes. Enchiladas, ooh, nice, I love enchiladas. Okay, this is sort of working, but I think it would work better if we had like a smooth, a smooth squash and not like a bumpy one. <laughs> Eek. winter squash in your tomato based pasta sauce. That sounds amazing. Put it on the table and my hand on top. Oh, you mean put it down here? Yeah, I can do that, but that still doesn't help me. Uh, that still doesn't help me with these, with these grooves. Like you can see that it has like these bumps on it. And so it's a little hard for me to get in there. Usually, you know what, to be honest, I have never peeled a squash before. I, I don't ever peel squash. What I do is I, I leave the skin on, I cut it in half, I seed it, and I, I bake it, I bake the two halves. And then usually you can take a spoon and it just like comes right out of the skin. Or you can even eat the skin if you want. Like honestly, the skin's not that bad tasting. I do not usually peel squash. I don't know if I ever have. That's why I wasn't sure if this would work. <laughs> yeah, probably probably a knife, yeah. See, trial and error, right? We we learn, we fix it, we figure out a better way. That does look pretty cool though. Something about that looks super neat. <laughs> Plan C and D are butcher knife followed by hatchet. Okay. Let's hope we don't get there. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. <laughs> Morgan King, this is a little bit easier. Thank you. Thank you for the tip. dough is now very smooth, but also very sticky. I don't know if this is how it's supposed to look, but it's okay. We're going to roll with it. Um, Yeah. 
Yeah, Kirkland brand. My mom buys stuff like this for me from Costco. I think she gave me this roll like three years ago. I'm still using it. <laughs> We are, uh, we are a two-person household, so we tend to go through things like a little on the slow side, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to use Costco, um, you know, at least for food stuff. We, we also don't have like a spare fridge or anything like that, so I don't have a Costco membership. I probably wouldn't use it a whole lot, but when my mom comes to visit, she'll like get me paper towels and stuff. <laughs> okay, so this dough feels pretty good. It feels like really nicely combined. Um, it's like not too sticky. It feels good. I think I think we're on the right track. So I'm gonna wrap that and I'm just gonna let that sit a little bit, um, like 30 minutes or so at least, before I try to roll it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, if you have kids or like, you know, in-laws that live with you or whatever, I, I totally get buying in bulk. It just doesn't make sense for us right now. So your kids are still young enough that hopefully it'll be a few years. Yeah, you say that now, but once once they're like, uh, yeah, once they're like preteens and teens, oh my goodness, like lock up your food. They're gonna eat everything. <laughs> Teenagers eat so much. Yeah, we don't have any kids, so no reason. It's, yeah, just too much food. Fourteen thousand five hundred and eighty-nine cookies. I still haven't really been doing anything with those. People, I'm letting people earn them, but I'm not really doing much with it. Good for you. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me turn it up. I totally forgot that, uh, I'm sorry guys. I forgot that I had turned it down because of my mixer. Um, do you think three years of use is much? What, what do you mean by that? Oh, three years of, of plastic wrap? Yeah, I do. <laughs> it seems like a lot. That's the fear that you have every day. Oh my gosh. Well, sorry. That's, that's your reality. <laughs> I can't help you there. Better start saving your money now. Save your money. So, so your teenager can eat. Oh God. Yeah. You have the same foil that's been around for four years. I also have a Costco foil. What is plastic wrap? Um, it's sometimes called like cling wrap or cling film or saran wrap. It's it's a I don't I don't know what they would call it. I assume they have it in Germany though. It's just plastic wrap that you put over your food to keep it fresh. Like you can wrap stuff in it or you can like wrap a bowl, put it on top of a bowl. You guys don't have that? 
I just found out like last week that you can microwave plastic wrap. I didn't know that. I had never known that in my whole life. I just found out. Yeah, what do you guys call it? Okay, this kind of works if I kind of like go sideways and like kind of peel it. That sort of works. What, what do you call it? You don't call it plastic wrap? Okay, maybe it's not working that well. Might have to do the plan B. Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Keeping it fresh foil. It's called keeping it fresh foil. Oh, <laughs> you can also wrap stuff tightly and poach it. I like this is crazy to me. I I didn't know that you could put it in the oven or the microwave. Like I had I'd never heard this in my life. My parents have never microwaved plastic wrap in my life. I never knew it was possible. I just found out like last week. Fresh keeping foil. Okay, I like that. That's cute. Yeah, this is fine. It works. It's really tedious, but it works. <laughs> I just want to roll my pasta. I just want to get to the fun part. You don't use the plastic wrap at all or the dishwasher? You don't use a dishwasher? I don't really use my dishwasher. I, I use it as a drying rack mostly. Like I can't, it's probably been a few weeks since I ran it. to roast these seeds. I'm thinking like a garlic salt roasted seed would be awesome. You guys ever do that? Roast your squash seeds or your pumpkin seeds? I hope so. I hope y'all aren't throwing them out. You gotta bake them. You toast them like at a low heat for a while. Toss them in some oil and some seasonings. They're amazing. You just eat them whole. tonight or if it's late what did you have for dinner tonight
oh, you can put food in a plastic bag, shrink wrap it, and put it in the dishwasher? Okay, why? Why would you want to do that? <laughs> I don't understand. It's working. It's, it's working. <laughs> you don't even have a dishwasher? Well, I mean, they can be useful, again, if you have like a family and they're going through a lot of plates and stuff, that's great. But for me, like having a lot of, you know, like a peeler, the, the dishwasher is not going to do as great of a job as if I actually clean it. Like it almost never comes out anywhere near as close, anywhere near as good as if I like actually do it by hand. It's good for like plates and cups and bowls. In my opinion, it's not that great for like other stuff, but it's probably because I don't have that nice of a dishwasher. I think if you have a really nice one, that you can just put anything in them. Anyway, that's what the commercials tell me, if the commercials are to be trusted. You know the ones where they put like a baked on lasagna pan in the dishwasher? I can't, I would never, I would never put a baked on lasagna pan in my dishwasher. No one answered my question. No one ha no one's having any dinner tonight. No one's eating anything, really. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't asking you. Yeah, you were. <laughs> You always have your thumb on the blade to better control it. Yeah. Like this. Okay. I think that's like kind of as good as it's going to get on this one. These are kind of some deep grooves. I think it's fine. There we go. That's pretty good. This one, also not too bad. Just clean it up a little bit. Honestly, you can eat the you can eat the skin. It's not I don't know. It doesn't really taste like much. Sometimes it can be bitter, but usually I think it's not that bad. So I feel like these won't kill anyone, but whatever. Spaghetti with tomato sauce and tuna. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if I should make spaghetti or fettuccine. I have, I have the both sizes. 
I haven't decided yet. I guess we'll see how, how the dough feels. <laughs> we'll see if, if I'm even able to like roll out anything passable. It might just be an utter failure, who knows. So we got our two squashes. It's weird that they're different colors. That's kind of funny. Slightly less than 90 degree angle between the thumb and the blade. I don't know if I totally follow, but it's okay. <laughs> I see. I hold mine like this usually. I used to hold it like this, but I, I mean, I know this is like to put your finger on the other side is the best way to do it. So I've been really trying to do that. Um, okay, then we're going to seed these. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it open. Nice. And these are all gonna be like a tasty snack once I get them cleaned out and baked. You, you mean like when you kind of like do that because I, I I mean I can like peel an apple and stuff like that I know what you mean you kind of like pull it towards you but yeah and it kind of looks like you're about to cut yourself yeah <laughs> all right I'm just gonna like loosen these up Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can do that. Ah, <laughs> oh, these seeds are gonna be so tasty. So I'll clean these up in a second. squash. I'll set this aside for a second. Um, okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and cube these. Let's see, we want about half inch pieces. We want them kind of small. It says about three cups. I'm going to see how much this is because, again, I am kind of, uh, 
kind of going rogue with the recipe a little bit. So if I'm making it differently, I want to note that. Oh, sounds great, Quantastic. Hope no one notices your rice secret. <laughs> I'm sure they won't. I'm sure it'll be delicious. That's how you do it a lot due to your big potato culture. You don't use a potato peeler? Oh my gosh, I can't imagine peeling like a lot of potatoes using a paring knife. That sounds like a major pain in the butt. Like the potato peeler is just so much easier. This is going to be more squash than it calls for. That's like a cup. Plop. I tell you what, I'm going to bowl. I knew this was going to be a dishes heavy recipe. I knew when I embarked on this quest that it was going to be a lot of dishes in my future. Depends on the potato. Okay, I guess if it's like a really small potato, yeah, a peeler is actually harder to use. I agree with that. If you have a big potato though, I guess maybe it's only in America that we have those stupid large potatoes that are like way too big. I know, DJ Concarne, tell him. That's what I've been saying. That's what I've been saying for years. You call the potato peeler a carrot peeler? I just call it a peeler. What do you want? It's all candy. I just call it a peeler. Or a vegetable peeler, yeah. But it's not even a vegetable peeler because you peel fruit with it too. You can peel an apple with it. So it's just a peeler. Personally, I find it very appealing. You hate doing dishes, that's why you cook? Yeah. <laughs> I hate doing dishes too. <laughs> oh, you have the biggest potatoes? Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to question your potato size, sir. <laughs> I just thought, you know how Americans, we have all those like I don't know, just like stupid agricultural things, like giant tasteless vegetables. You know. He's so insulted. We have the biggest potatoes. Excuse me? cups of squash. That was one with squash. Maybe I shouldn't use the other one. Maybe I should save the other one. Yeah, use less atomic waste as a fertilizer. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, guys, okay, I'm not, I have a conundrum. Should I just, should I just roll with what I got here? 
and like save that and like roast it or something. Just like, just in case the sauce is awful. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. Well, this one's already peeled and prepped and ready to go, but we do have our three cups of, I know. <laughs> Lower my expectations? What do you mean, Zerudo? Um, I think I think I'll keep those and then I can I can like roast them and make something yummy with it. I don't know, but I'll st I'll try to stick to the recipe. <laughs> You're like I don't know what I'm talking about. Go with what I got. Yeah, I because if I if I make it if I make the squash ratio larger, then I have to mess with everything else too. And I yeah I won't do that. You're right. See, ah! you guys are steering me in the right direction. ready to roll. Seems a little soft, but it's probably well rested. Let me just chop my other stuff while I'm at it. Okay, here, I'll put these away. I'll deal with you later. I know, mama knows best, always. She always does. It's okay though, cause I got both, I got two squashes for 99 cents. So, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a 50 cent squash. Okay. gonna chop some sage and then this is what we're gonna fry. Ooh, so interesting. Sage has such an interesting smell. Freeze what to death? My squash? I love sage because it's so fuzzy. Like the leaves are just so soft and velvety. You just like pet your face with them. I didn't do it because that's not food safe. Um, so like about a tablespoon, thereabouts, maybe a little bit more. Oops. Okay. And we will... Wow, that is such an intense smell. I don't usually work with sage. Okay. Yeah, it just it smells very like herbal. A little a little eucalyptusy. Yeah. Smells nice, but um yeah, basically I'm gonna like crisp that up in some hot oil and I think I think it goes on at the end. I think it goes on like as a garnish. Um. Okay, so we got some sage. I need to I need to get an herb garden. Like I need to have fresh herbs on hand. That's what I want. Oh, I forgot. I'm saving my scraps. I always forget. So 
So this is my uh, vegetable scraps bag. I keep it in the freezer and when it is full, I'm going to make a vegetable stock out of it. I just need to be better about remembering to like use it. Sometimes I'll cut up an onion and I'll forget. It's mostly onions and carrots is what I want to focus on because I think I think I read that those are going to have the best flavor for a broth. Like you don't want too many green vegetables. Stuff like broccoli and all that can make your broth really bitter. So I'm trying to. I, don't, I want to use my scraps, but I also want to make it taste good. <laughs> so. Another bowl. Oh no, the squash is going in with the onion. I, it can all go together. Great. We'll just combine it and pile it onto this bowl. Ooh. Oh man. This is a really big pile of stuff. I should have used a larger bowl. But you know what? I don't want to wash another bowl, so we're just going to make a mountain. I love my Instant Pot. Do you have one? Or are you thinking about getting one? duro -eight. I usually soak the onion in cold water to prevent watery eyes. That's a great tip. Do you, do you cut it in half first and then soak it? Like to let the water get in, inside? Or do you just put the whole onion in water? Oh gosh. Okay, we're gonna do some garlic. <sighs> it says two garlic cloves. I'm just gonna finish what, what I have here, which is probably like, you know, the equivalent of like three, which is fine. Thinking about getting one, but it feels like cheating. I mean, I think there's something to be said for like, it, it's basically just a pressure cooker. It's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Like pressure cookers have been around for ages, the stovetop kinds. It's just like a safer version of it. Um, so I don't think you need to feel bad. Also like good food is good food. How you make it, you know, if you're still using fresh ingredients and you're still like putting effort into making the dish, like that's not even cheating. That's, that's a hack. <laughs> that's a cooking hack. So I don't think you should like, I don't think that should be the reason you don't get one. You know what I mean? Like, I like mine. I don't use it a ton. Um, you simply don't cry when you cut onions because you're a man. Okay. Whatever. Um, I try to use mine. Um, I feel like I would like to use it more if I had more people to feed because it's really great for cooking like, you know, big amounts of stuff. So if you have a big family, I might consider getting one. Um, or, if, or if you cook a lot for 
you know, community stuff, like, definitely, it's pretty cool. Um, the thing that sold me on it was one of the early things I made was, or I, there are two things. One, uh, making broth. You can make broth pretty quickly, like, in, I don't know, an hour of cooking, whereas, like, a lot of meat broths, you have to cook it for, like, eight hours or more. So that's pretty cool. The other thing is I made refried beans in it, and that just came out awesome. Oh yeah, by the way, if you guys haven't joined the Discord server yet, you should come check it out. Um, you know, post your food pictures, post pictures of your pets, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, come hang out. The, the link's right there. Um, sorry, what was I saying? Oh, Instant Pot. I made refried beans in it. And they took me like about an hour of cooking and I didn't even soak the beans first. Like that blew my mind. Um, Cause beans, you always have to soak them overnight. And then even so, the last time I made beans, I soaked them overnight. I cooked them in a crock pot for like eight hours and they were still hard. When I ate them, they were still hard. I was so mad. Um, but this time, totally dry beans went in and in an hour, I had like decent refried beans. They probably could have gone like another 10 minutes, but still, that was pretty cool. So, I don't know. Overall, I like it a lot. I think it could also be great for people with like a smaller kitchen, just because it does a lot. Um, I don't know, I enjoy it. Personally, mine is a little on the large side for me. I have the I have the eight quart. It's giant. Um, it's so big that I don't have anywhere to put it, so it just like floats around my kitchen um, and annoys the crap out of me. Moist muffins. Thanks for the follow. I thought you were following. What the heck? Twitch. <laughs> your space is already full and you're worried it'll take up more counter space yeah Yeah, I can see that. What do you what do you mostly like to cook? Like what what kind of food do you usually like to prepare? How's it going, muffins? No, I don't meal prep. Um Honestly, the reason I don't meal prep is because we get tired of, like, we can't eat the same thing for a whole week. We just can't. Um, I'll, I'll usually, like, have some leftovers when I cook, but for the most part, uh, <laughs> I don't do, like, Monday through Friday meal prep. I just can't. I can't eat the same thing every day. Um... Mm, I can still smell that sage. It smells good. Okay, so we got some garlic. There is a single piece of lint in my onion. So we're gonna chop these garlic, chop the garlic up. And why do you meal prep muffins? Or does anyone here meal prep? I don't know. Do you like do you and if so, do you get bored? Or do you like I don't know. I like the idea of it, but I don't know. Stews are a part of your regular rotation. If you make a lot of stock and stew, you might want to consider it. 
be perfectly honest, like to be able to make a stock in such a short period of time is kind of awesome. Um, so maybe consider it. Or if you have a friend, if you have a friend who has one, maybe borrow it and try one out. <laughs> borrow your neighbors. Because I feel like everyone and their mother has one, right? So. Um, if you can, like, get your hands on one and borrow it from a friend for a day and just, like, try making something in it so you can get a feel for it, that's what I would recommend. But I like mine. Ah! You know what? I'm not going to put it in there. My mountain is too high. The onion mountain is too high. It's too dangerous. If you're trying to do intermittent fasting and eat one big meal a day, yeah. So how, how does intermittent fasting work? It, it, does it specifically mean one meal a day or is it, or is that just a blanket term that covers like different types of fasting schedules? Cause I, I've heard of people doing it. I've never tried it. Um, I'm trying to do something along that same vein where I'm trying to stop eating by a certain time in the evening. Um, rather than like eating into the, into the night. Cause that's a bad habit that I have. Um, let's see. Are you, are you doing it to try to lose weight or, um, like what, what's the reasoning behind it or to boost your metabolism or something? You're debating between an instant pot versus a stovetop pressure cooker. I mean, if you like the high, the less high tech things, that I guess. But I don't know. I the instant pot's really cool because it does have a slow cooker function as well. I don't know if you ever do like slow cook stuff. It has a saute function, um, so you can like like say you're making a chicken broth. You can like you could brown your chicken in the pot, and then add your liquid and then just cover it, you know? It's eating within a certain range of hours and then fasting for, I see. That's intense. I don't think I can handle that. But I, I am trying to not eat so late at night. <laughs> okay. Let me switch these the other side. I'm just going to turn things around and let's check out our pasta maker. You're testing yourself? I, I Well, I understand that it's it's kind of like a mental test thing, but are, are you like trying to do it to lose weight or what's the reasoning behind it? DJ's going to try that too? Oh, okay. I probably should. It, it's probably really good for your metabolism. I don't know. Okay, so here is our pasta dough. It's looking a little sticky. I don't know how well this is gonna work. I'm so nervous, guys. Okay. instructions. Okay. So we're going to roll the dough first. We got our rotator knob. Yes, we do. There it is. Okay. Um, so one is the narrowest, seven is the widest. Okay. So flour it, fold it, run it through again. I have a feeling this is going to be like a sticky mess. I'm scared, guys. It's okay. We got this. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe I will put my garlic on top. Okay, the garlic's going on top of the onion mountain. Ooh, don't fall. I 
should have used a bigger bowl, but I'm too stubborn to like dirty another one. Amazing. flour down. I'll use some extra flour up here That's, that I can grab. There's some flour in here. Okay, let's see. Uh, how does this thing work? Never use water, only dry wipe it. Okay. Gotcha, you're gonna be observing Ramadan? Cool, cool. What um what is an iftar? I, I'm not familiar with that word. How does this work? Okay, so we got a C clamp like that. Okay, let's see, where should I do this? Let's see, should I do it on the side of the counter? I gotta do it somewhere. Maybe I can do it on the cutting board. It might work. Oh, that's when you break the fast during it. Interesting, that's super cool. 300 people? Oh my god, that's a lot of food. Wow. So I've attached it to the cutting board, so that's pretty sturdy. I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe not that well, huh? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, here's our hand crank. So this is, this moves everything. Okay, how do I, I just turn the knob? Let's see, how does this work? Oh, I pull it? No, yeah, I pull it and turn it. Okay, so let's start on the widest one. Okay. Interesting. Um, okay, well, <laughs> I guess let's just go for it. <laughs> I don't know how well you guys can see. That's not great. Here, let me, uh, this is a pasta roller. I'm trying to figure out how I can make this look a little bit better. Let me temporarily scooch myself over here. 
or maybe up here. Let's try that. Alright guys, wish me luck. Okay, here's my bow. flower it, or at least flower my hands. I hope, let, let's pray to the pasta gods that this doesn't become just a sticky mess. Okay, oh, we're already getting a little sticky. I can already feel it's getting a little sticky. Let's see, do I have to feed it in? How are we doing this? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Bitter? How do I get it started? Like that? Oh. Oh, there it is. Oh my gosh. Oh, do you have the time? Oh, okay. Okay. I wish I could show you guys better, but it, this C-clamp makes it really hard for me to uh, bring it into frame. I'm sorry, I want to figure it out. Let's try that. <laughs> Everyone wants me to cut it in half. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm rolling it backwards. Don't roll it backwards. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh no, it's sticking. Okay. Whew. Okay, we did a first roll. So now I like what? I flower it and I fold it and I do it again? Let's do it again. in there. Oh, I was turning it the wrong way. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. Babe, do you want to see this? Oh, unless I throw it on the floor. <laughs> I can't figure out where to put my hands. This is really fun. Just use your hand. Just use your hand. Do I keep folding it? No, I don't want to keep folding it, right? That's that's just the first. Okay. Then we go a little smaller. Issues. Let me check. No, two people, three people said.
some burial still robotic.